Good morning. So last night I didn't get much sleep at all. I was trying to come up with a video to share with you guys. Today we're giving everything away for free that is in our Treasure Junction thrift store. The reason why I was doing this is because I wanted to be able to share the most um, priceless gift in the world and that's salvation. Um, Jesus died and gave everything so that you could be forgiven and have a relationship with him. If I sound or seem sober minded, it's because I'm very sober minded right now. I woke up and I had a dream last night and it makes me really sad. But I was actually at a funeral, which I did not attend, and I should have been there. Um, I had a friend, her name was Chelsea, and I didn't talk to her for many, 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 many years. I, I remember the last time I, I drove past her and she drove past me. Um, I thought a lot of her. My heart wanted to reach out, but I did so many things um, through the times when I was doing drugs and things that I, I broke a lot of bridges and I just assumed everybody was talking about me and nobody wanted anything to do with me. Um, whether it was to do with the things that the people that I robbed um, or, or even if it was to do with once I became born again, then I started beating people over the head with the gospel saying, you have to be saved, you're gonna go to hell. And I, I, I didn't have much tact <laughs> to it. So so I, I, I was used to people um, really judging me kind of harshly so I, I say this because in, in the dream last night, um, I, I, I was weeping, I was sad um, over the loss of Chelsea. And then I, look, I looked up and it kind of kept turning into different funerals. Um, the next one was my, my, my friend Chris, um, who also passed away. And I had another friend, Chris, that passed away. Um, the very first person close to me that I could remember, his name was Rocky. Um, I remember being very shocked. Uh, he got hit in the head with a two by four and he laid over and fell asleep in a ditch. And I just remember that really impacting me. So my Uncle Jack passed away recently and it, it, it's, it's still not real. It, it is, and I'm 100% aware of it. I've, I've grieved, I've gone through it, but, but it's also, that's, that's what death does to us sometimes. We're so used to having people in our lives that we can contact them and talk to them whenever we want. The biggest thing that I realized this morning was there's so many people that I love, that I care about, but I'd no longer communicate with. Um, the last time I saw my grandma, she was in my driveway visiting from New York and I, my family was going through COVID. So she drove in the driveway, she was in the passenger side, they had the window down, we're talking from a distance. And I remember not being able to hug her when she drove out of the driveway. And it really affected me because my grandma's hugs was the most favorite person in the world for me to get hugged by. Her, She was just so full of love and just so full of joy, especially when, when she got to connect to the people whom she loved the most. So I, I was crushed that day that I couldn't just squeeze her and get a hug from her. I didn't know it was going to be the last time I saw her, but, but it hurts. Um, I had a, a friend named Frank and he was a friend of all the vendors at Brentwood Street Flea Market. I remember the last words that I spoke with him. I didn't, I, I thought I was going to be able to see him the next day. I had no idea that he was going to get sick. I had no, I, I, we never know. We never know. So I really, really, really hate going to funerals. I've, I've been to so many of them. So many of my friends, relatives and acquaintances have, have passed on. I remember going to one in Adam's farm. It was uh, my neighbor's Chris. I, he went to school with me, I grew up with him, and he was actually killed. And on the way there, I'm with my friend Mike. And Mike was like a big brother to me. We were very close and we're, we're driving there and I told him how much I, I just didn't want to go, how I hated funerals, how how I'd rather skip it. Um, but I wanted, I was his ride. And he looked at me and he said, Nick, he's like, you can't miss funerals. They're the, they're, they're the most important thing that you can do. He's like, wouldn't you want someone to come to your funeral? He's like, he, he basically said, you're being very selfish. And even if it hurts and even if it's painful, make make yourself go because people need to, to see you there. People need to know that, that you love the person, that you care for them. And I agreed with him, although it just, it, it kept resonating with me. I had no idea that a few months later I'd actually be attending Mike's funeral. Um, they, they asked me if I wanted to say a word, me and my friend Jonathan, and we were, we were very close to Mike. He, he, like I said, he was like a big brother to me. I've always wanted one. Um, 
uh, one of the things I remember with Mike is I tried to share the gospel with him and he's like, I just, I don't get it. I can't get it. I don't comprehend it. I don't understand it. And he ended up coming out of a place called Pierce Ministries and he, he met me at work. He was walking up to me. He had a smile on his face and I was surprised to see him. And I remember him saying, Nick, I get it. I, I, I believe in Jesus now. I, I have a relationship with him. And the, there was nothing more, um, nothing higher to celebrate. I was completely um, blown away because I've been praying for him to come to know the Lord for a very long time. Um, he did end up passing away through addiction um, that he struggled, struggled with throughout his life. Um, I am going to talk a, a couple stories I've never shared publicly that I, I feel like I want to share this morning. Um, one of them is my friend Chris. He, he was a part of the same group as Chelsea. Uh, we we had so much fun together. This group it was just a carefree group, and we we were all we were all so different, but we loved each other anyway, and it felt like family. And I um I don't know. I, they just accepted me for who I was, and I appreciate every single one of them to the to this day. So I w w this one night I was on drugs and I was drinking, and I was really out of my mind. I ended up at at the house um, going back to grab something, and the party kind of scattered. So I went into the house and without thinking, I actually stole a safe. I stole some, I stole some medication bottles and, and when I opened the safe, there was guns in it. I ended up trading them for drugs. I ended up, um, selling some of the pills. I, I did get caught for this and I thought I was going to go to jail. I should have went to jail. I deserved jail. Um, but when I showed up to Chris's dad, who is no longer um, with us as well, he, he looked at me in the eyes and he said, if I saw you that night, I would have killed you. He said, but, but me being with you today, I, I have been forgiven much. I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus and I want to forgive you. I want you to do something. I want you to pass forward or pass on a good blessing to somebody else. In other words, when somebody messes up, don't, don't judge them harshly and, and, and do the worst thing. Um, go out of your way and love them. Do what I'm doing to you. And I've done that. I've been able to do that many times with other people. Um, God, God bless his soul. Um, so that, that was one of the scenarios. But when I did that, I'm sure the whole group found out about it and I was highly ashamed. Um, I, I thought a lot about Chris. I thought a lot about his dad, a lot about his family, a lot about his sister. I absolutely had no bad feelings towards them, but the drugs within me caused me to do things that I would never have done, um, in a million years if it wasn't for them. Uh, the other story is my, my friend Freeman. He's also no longer with us, um, and his mother is no longer with us. I, I actually took some things from him, and I remember I became a Christian. I wrote him a letter. I apologized. I wanted to make things right. I don't think he was ever necessarily able to forgive me, and I don't. I don't blame him. I. I, I was so in the wrong, um, but but there's so many bridges. I'm saying this because I broke so many bridges with people that I can no longer make things right with. So I want to share the share this video. If there's anybody who I have been friends with in the past. Please reach out to me. Please come visit me today. Please, I, I want to make things right. I, I love you and I'm sorry for whatever I've done to you in whatever capacity that I've harmed you or hurt you. Um, I also know a lot of times things are in our head. Maybe we didn't even actually, they had nothing against us, but we think they do. Um, so I know there's some situations where that has happened. I'm gonna share another story. Um, one of my friends, JP Shepard, he was kind of like a little brother. He was always up at the skate park. We grew up together. Um, I thought a lot of him. He was he was family. Uh, he, he came back into my life, and I remember um, on his 21st birthday party, he was uh, turning 21, and we were we were both believers. And he wanted me to come to the bar to go play pool and to have some beer with him. Um, I was trying not to drink. I was trying to um, just get closer to God because I was struggling again in that area. So I chose not to go, even though I, a part of me thought I should have went there just to support him. I found out a few days later. Um, he actually, leaving the bar that night, he crashed and he ended up killing himself. And I was never able to talk to him again. And, and there's so many things I wanted to share with him. We were in the middle of, of working things out. He sent me a text the night of, at, of his birthday and he said, Nick, he's like, I, I understand why you're not coming. I also want to quit alcohol. He said, this is going to be the last night that I ever drink. Or, and, and I'm going to try as hard as I can to, to leave this lifestyle behind me. And I'm gonna work with you. We're gonna pray together. We're, we're gonna we're gonna follow the Lord together. Um, a lot of times we say one more time, and, and and it's too late. There's never a good 
reason to do one more time, no matter what you're struggling with. That one more time could be your last time. Um, it, it's, it still bugs me today. I think maybe I should have went. Maybe I could have. I, I would have drove them. I, I screwed up. But then again, I shouldn't have been in that environment because I probably would have fell and started drinking again. I, I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. Um, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to this one night. I was riding to a party in High Point, North Carolina. I was with three of my friends. They're very close to me. Um, all three of them are no longer with us today. Um, one of them, his name was Bryce. Um, he passed away from a heroin overdose. I, he he was he was an amazing person, amazing friend. Um, he left behind children. Um, another another one was Freeman was one of the ones in that car, and then the other one was one of my best friends, Lauren. Um, we were very close. We did everything together. The days I was down and depressed, even on one of my birthdays, one day she would come over, pull me out of bed, and make me go. And just she tried to she tried to cheer me up all the time. I heard that she hung herself. Um, she ended up taking her own life, and I know that she left behind a child. I remember sitting in the parking lot, and she was like, I've seen that you're a different person. I know something happened to you that night. I want what you have. And I shared the gospel with her, and she was also struggling to receive it. She just couldn't understand it or couldn't comprehend it. So that, that, that was another one. I'm sharing all these with you. There's been so many other people that ha are no longer with us, acquaintances and other friends. Um, but these are the ones that are coming to my mind right now. So that night, we pull up to the party, and Lauren was the one that knew these people. I've never met them, never been to the street in my life. And she said, these people rent the house from some strong Christians. We're not supposed to be drinking. We're not supposed to be doing drugs here. So please keep it on the down low, be quiet, and just don't get in trouble. So I ended up taking mushrooms. Um, I, took, I took a lot of them, and, and at this house, I started, I started off as a trip. And I started freaking out. I, I thought everybody was trying to kill me. And I, I just, I really went loopy and lost it. In the middle of this trip though, I ended up having revelations or flashbacks. And like in what appeared to be a moment, a uh, memory just kept hitting me. And I was, I was like, all the things that I've done wrong, all the lies I was telling my parents, all the, all the bad choices that I made, they just kind of flooded in me. And fear struck my soul. For the first time, even though I wasn't a religious person, I started thinking about heaven, I started thinking about hell, and I knew with everything within me, if I was to die that moment, that I would end up going to hell. And I didn't want to go there. So I cried out to God, and I was not a praying person. I was like, God, I don't want to go to hell. Take me to a church, take me somewhere safe. And I just remember praying to him, and to me, that was the last thing I ever would imagine doing. I remember during this time in my life, my mom was like, you need to pray, and I got so offended with her. But she just knew that there was no other hope for me, no other help. And I knew that they were praying for me. So anyhow, everything inside me after that prayer said, get up and run, run as fast as you can. So I got up and all my friends tried to stop me. Um, I even picked up a knife and told them to get away from me. I was losing my mind. I thought they were trying to kill me and I just knew I had to get out of there. Um, in the process, I think they called some of my other friends, Jonathan, Matt and Drew, some of my closest friends throughout my life. And they showed up around this time. And let me get back to a part of the story. I'm in the living room and a part of this hallucination or whatever you want to call it, there's a, the windows ended up becoming jail cell, like a bar. And I could look out the bar and there was flashing lights like cops and ambulances. And I looked closer and my mom and dad and my sister and my friends and different people were watching from the outside me locked in this room. And they were crying and they were bawling and they wanted to help. But there was nothing that they could do to help me. I was, I was, I was a lost case. Um, so that, that was all in my head. None of that part actually happened. But I believe it was significant because that's what drug addiction does. Everybody watches from the outside. So I find the back door, the side door, and I end up running down the street. Um, they said, Nick, Nick, and they tried to stop me. And I, I looked at them and just ran past them. I ran through the woods. I ran through some briars. Um, they tried to follow me, but when they got to the thick briars, they had no idea how I could even get through them. I jumped over some creeks, um, through, through the woods, ended up back on a street. I thought it was a different street. I, ended, I ran past a bunch of houses. I ended up on a porch at midnight. It was um, actually uh, not a church, but there was no churches open. I, didn't, I forgot about the prayer at this point. But the gentleman looked through the blinds or through his window and he saw me and his eyes met my eyes. And when he saw my eyes, he knew I was on drugs because he once was there himself. And instead of calling the police, instead of yelling at me to get off his property, he opened the door and he said, would you like to come in? I can give you a glass of water. He invited me inside. 
God, he said later, spoke to his heart and told him to let me come in. So we stayed up till like 4 a.m. in the morning. And he's sharing to me the gospel. He's having me read scripture. He's trying to calm me down. Um, I told him I was a Christian, but I told him that there's no way that God would forgive me, that I just, I've gone way too far. And he said, why don't you leave that part to God? Why don't you just ask God to forgive you? And if he chooses to, then he'll forgive you. So I prayed the sinner's prayer. I said, Lord God, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. I do believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. Please come into my heart. Please wash me from the filth of my sins. And I didn't think anything happened. Um, it was awkward, uncomfortable. So my parents took me back home. It was either the next night or a night later. I end up at another party at a house I've never been with, with people I've never been with for the most part. This was in Greensboro around UNCG. I remember drinking, but this time, instead of drinking and enjoying being drunk, I started getting convicted. I started feeling bad for the alcohol. And I was like, what is this? Something different happened. So then I went into a bedroom. I probably shouldn't have been in there, but there was a Bible on the shelf. I picked up the Bible and started reading it. And it started talking about what happened to me, that I became a brand new person in Christ Jesus. The word of God became so alive, I got scared. I shut the book, threw it down on the floor, walked out of the room, and I believe I left the party at that point as fast as I could. I ended up struggling with drugs and alcohol for a while after that. I didn't get cleaned up overnight. Um, I, I have still struggled with them throughout the years. There's been times where I've been sober for four years, five years. Then there was times I would start drinking. Um, that is a completely sad story. What I am telling you, though, is this day, this moment, I'm walking with the Lord. He has freed me from all of that stuff. I'm no longer on medications. I'm no longer drinking alcohol. I, um, I'm really just living, living by the power of the Holy Spirit at day by day, and I'm trusting him for everything. Um, I am not doing this to brag on myself. I'm doing this to brag on the Lord Jesus. I should have been the one, the fir one of the first ones to die in that car that night. The other three people, they were so much better than me. They, they weren't as bad off, as far gone as I was. I don't understand. Life doesn't make sense. If I didn't get saved that night, I would definitely 100% be gone. I would be dead at a young age, too. Um, also, there was, I've had three or four stomach surgeries, um, multiple different things. I had a colostomy bag. There was a time I was at the ER, and I was waiting for about an hour and a half, and they finally let me in, and they took me into emergency surgery or a procedure. And they were like, why did you wait so long? You, you, you should have died. And then they said, you actually know what it feels like to be pregnant because of the pain and because of how much my stomach was swollen at that point. Um, and that, that's not cool. <laughs> it was a lot of pain. But the thing is, I could have died that day. I didn't know. We None of us know. You don't know. I don't know the, if the last time we're going to see someone or the last time it's going to be our day. We don't know when when our last day is. Um, I, I don't want to be this... Um, I don't know if it's melodramatic or just talk about such a negative thing, but I woke up and I was just heavy. There's times where I just randomly start crying over missing the people that I have lost. Um, I, we, I've lost way too many people at too young of an age. And I believe that somebody is watching this video and this video, if you take heed to what I'm about to say, will preserve your life. It will save your life. Um, I, it doesn't matter if you're a, an atheist a agnostic, a Wiccan, a witch, a warlock, a Buddhist. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, you were baptized when you were young, if you consider yourself a good person, a bad person, absolutely nothing matters because when Jesus died and his blood hit the earth, it was for every human soul. As long as you're breathing today, you still have an opportunity to repent. And it means to say, God, I'm sorry. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I've messed up. I confess that I have been ignoring you or neglecting you. And today, in this moment, I want to give you my life. I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. I ask for you to forgive me and to save my soul. I ask for you to come into my heart. And if you do that, it says, if you believe with your heart, you shall be saved. If It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So I just, I'm going to pray for you. I pray, Father God, for anybody who's watching this video who does not know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray that they would call on you and that they would become born again. Because Jesus himself said, Lord, that you must be born again. You are the doorway to heaven. No man can get to heaven unless they come through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father God, I pray that you'd open their eyes, that you would tug on their hearts, and I pray for their salvation, and I pray for it to happen today. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that, or if you have received the Lord today, or if you have questions, please message me. Um, I would love to answer your questions. Uh, if you did get saved today, 
I, I want to give you a Bible as a gift. Um, so just let me know. Uh, either way, come come visit me. I'll be up at Treasure Junction Thrift between 10 and 6 p.m. We are giving everything away for free that is in that room, this furniture, knickknacks. So just come up. You don't need any money. Um, you might find something you need for your house or for your apartment. Um, I will be not there between 1 and 2 because I'm going to help Toby, the, the gentleman that led me to the Lord. Um, he's doing a baptism today to a, a person. Um, his name is Jason. He actually shot himself in the head and he, he went blind because of it. Um, but he is following the Lord and he wanted to get baptism so the whole world could know that he is following Jesus Christ and that he loves God. Um, so God bless you. Hopefully I'll see you out there. Um, uh, hold up. One last thing. One last thing. All right. So that night, those Christians said, um, we rent it from, or I mean, they said we rent this house from some strong Christians. The person's house that I ended up at, they were the strong Christians in the neighborhood that rented the house to those people. God knew that there was no church. He knew that if I was going to get help, if I was going to meet the Lord, I'd have to go to his people. And right now he has made me a person of God, not because I'm good. I'm not good. I've been I've, I've been a, a bad person for the majority of my life, and God just keeps forgiving me and cleaning me up. My righteousness is His righteousness. It's a gift, and that's the gift that I'm offering to you today. So just receive Jesus. Um, thanks again. I know it was a longer video than I normally do. I'm just glad I got through it because these are things that I don't want to talk about, but I, th I think it's very important. All right, God bless you. Love you. Bye bye.